Happy Wednesday, veterans, and thank you for spending time with us today. Before we get started with today's topic, sound off in the comments where you're tuning in from today, what branch you served in, and the years you served. Michael and I would really like to get a little information about our audience today. So sound off in the comments with um, when you served, what branch, and where you're tuning in from today. Awesome. Excited to be here with everybody. Looking forward to the great topic today as well. Yeah, Sherry Jackson, Air Force, 25 years. That's a long time. Uh, it's a very long time. I served uh, active duty for 21 and a half years. Ron Todd, 85 to 2008 Army. That's uh, a long time to serve as well. Sean Tuttle, Ellis Air Force Base, currently with a retirement date of 1 August of 2014 or 2024. Guessing that's coming up 2024, but, but you're on there. I'm assuming so as well. Ah, um, it's, it's a Cecilio, Cecilio Mew, uh, Army 2015 to 2023, just got out recently. Evelyn Army 90 to 94, Charles Jones, Navy 88 to 2010. Uh, looks like Bob served uh, Coast Guard and the Army 77 2000. That's a very long career. Uh, Ricky, welcome. We know you very well, sir. U.S. Marine Corps, 92 to 96. As you can see, he worked with us, and he's 100% permanent in total now. Yeah, I love seeing these 100% PNT guys that have been through the program still tuning in. That's always awesome. Welcome, Ricky. Mark Young, U.S. Army, 83 to 92. Carl, out in Norman, Oklahoma. David, looks like you uh, did multiple branches as well. Navy 84 to 94 and National Guard to 94 to 03. Uh, welcome. And we see your coach is Eddie. Eddie's a phenomenal coach. Uh, I love spending time with Eddie when I get a chance. Melvin Bracey, U.S. Army 82 to 02. That's a very long service as well. Travis Nesbeth. I served with the Travis Nesbeth. Uh, Wonder if that may be you. Um, Army 03 to 24. Looks like he retires in July. Congratulations on that. That's a big uh, achievement. That's awesome. Jason Arellano, let's say that right. Air Force retired after 20 years. Got out in 2015. Very good. Kenneth Carter, uh, Marine, 66 to 70. Awesome. Love seeing that Vietnam era guys in here. Guys and gals. I love working with Vietnam veterans. You guys have some of the greatest stories. I just love each and every Vietnam veteran I get. Um, amazing, amazing individuals to work with. Um, Bob Draglick, Navy 88 to 91. He's working with Coach Sosa. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome. Um, Robert Cruz, another multiple, multiple, multiple branch, Army 74 to 76, Navy 76 to 81. That is awesome. Looks like he served with the Marine Corps as a corpsman while he was in. Very cool. uh, Felicia, Felicia Marilyn looks like she's here for a husband that served from 2011 to 2017, U.S. Army. Um, looks like we've got a good mixture of veterans today. I've seen several Navy and Army and Air Force. I haven't seen too many Marines out there today, though. Uh, Craig L. Hicks, Air Force, 82 to 91. Um Bob Boff, uh, Army, 83 to 86. Uh, looks like he has a sleep apnea claim pending right now. Hopefully that is moving forward quickly for you. Uh, there's a Marine, Derek Smith, Marine Corps, 89 to 93. Very good. We, we, appreciate, we appreciate all you guys being here today. Um, a little bit about me. I served in the Navy for four years and quickly realized that I did not like being on a ship in the middle of an ocean. So after my four years of Navy service, um, well, while I was in the Navy, I did three deployments to the Persian Gulf to support Operation Southern Watch, Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. 
Once I got out of the Navy, I joined the Army about a year later, and I ended up doing 17 and a half years in the Army. I did multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan while I was in the Army. I retired as a grumpy first sergeant back in March of 2021. I started working here at VA Claims Insider in January of 2021 while I was on my transitional leave. Um, I knew when I retired, I wanted to continue to help, continue to serve, and getting to work with my brothers and sisters in arms is very rewarding to me. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for over three and a half years now. Um, love each and every day. Um, that I get to touch veterans and help them with life change. Um, I did not do my claim with uh, VA Claims Insider. Uh, after 21 years of service, I had a plethora of evidence and my disability claim was really simple to do. And um, I just love being here. I love helping the veterans. What about you, Michael? Yeah, so I did not uh, do multiple branches. Um, I was strictly Army. Um, didn't do quite as long as a lot of you guys on here, yourself included, Jesse. I was in for about seven years. Um, got out officially uh, 2014. Um, I did not file my first disability for about 10 years after. So I came into uh, VACI as a coach initially um, and then actually ended up finishing my 100% 100% permanent and total earlier this year by working through uh, the VACI system. So I am a product of uh, this system and I can speak and attest to the fact that it does work uh, as much as you work it. Um, I love being a coach. Uh, it's one of my it's a very demanding job, but one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. So uh, I'm very grateful and blessed to be here and get to work with you guys every single day and uh, celebrate a lot of life change. It's um, it's an honor and a privilege. So. Michael, you want to talk about our disclaimer a little bit so they get a little more information about who we are? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, we are uh, VA Claims Insider. We are not uh, accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Departments of Veterans Affairs, and we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching and consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. Uh, VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our preferred provider network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions, um, commonly referred to as IMOs, uh, for a wide range of disability connections. So many of you are probably thinking, how does VA Claims Insider do this? Um, we use the SIM method, strategy, education, and medical evidence. It's medical evidence at the end of the day that wins claims. Proper medical evidence is what's going to help you the most. What do we offer? We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, uh, which would include strategy sessions, claim submissions, and compensation and pension exam preparation. We also offer live classes via, via Zoom three times a day, coffee with the coaches, mental health exam prep, medical exam prep. Um, these classes that we, we do three times a day really help veterans get moving in the right direction, ensuring that they are prepared for anything that's coming up with the VA. All right, so if you're interested in learning more uh, about VACI, about our program, a little more about maybe what we can offer you. I uh, would love to offer you the opportunity to schedule a free discovery call. You can um, set that up and talk to one of our team members by going to vaclaims.help. Um, if you need help, reach out to our organization at vaclaimsinsider.com. Uh, we'd love to partner with you uh, on this journey of your VA claim. So we're going to roll into the topic now. We're discussing the upcoming changes of sleep apnea. Um, none of us like change, but we have to make sure veterans are prepared for it. So we're going to discuss the changes and how they can affect you. So huge changes in VA disability are coming this year regarding how the VA reviews and rates some conditions. The exact 
at implementation dates are not known. However, summer or fall of 2024 is my best guess. So what does this mean for you? Get your claims in ASAP. Because I think you want to get rated under the old criteria, which in my opinion is generally more favorable to you, which could result in a higher VA rating and more tax-free compensation. So if you're sitting out there, you're hesitating on your claim, you don't know which direction to go with it, you need to start working on it. You need to get it submitted as soon as possible. And, you know, uh, Michael just mentioned it. If you want to know more, sign up for that free discovery call. Talk, talk with one of our veteran ambassadors. See if you're a good fit for our program and get the ball moving now. Do not wait. Um, and just, you know, coming up with these changes, if you are already if you already have a VA rating for one of these conditions, conditions, you're grandfathered in under the old rating system. These changes will not affect your current VA rating. Here's the deal, fellow veterans. The current 50% CPAP VA rating for sleep apnea is about to change. Because the VA's proposed changes to sleep apnea, VA ratings could be coming by summer of 2024. I think the new effective date of the changes to VA ratings for sleep apnea will be within 60 days of the impl implementation date in summer of 2024. For example, let's say the changes get implemented on August 1, 2024, the actual effective date that change would be September 30th, 2024, so 60 days later. If you're sitting on a sleep apnea claim, if you have a diagnosis for sleep apnea, do that free discovery call. If you're a good fit, get signed up with us, get with that coach, develop that strategy, and figure out a way to move forward and get on it now. Absolutely. No time like the present, guys. You don't want to sit on this and you know get stuck after the changes have already taken effect. So what is sleep apnea? Uh, sleep apnea is a serious sleep disorder in which breathing is briefly or repeatedly, maybe and repeatedly, interrupted during your sleep. Um, it can occur from 10 times uh, up to hundreds of times an hour per night. Constant interruption in breathing can lead to uh, a variety of different uh, reduced sleep quality, uh, short-term memory loss, irritability, and even mood disorders, as well as major metabolic diseases and uh, <clears throat> such as diabetes and heart disease. Sleep, op sleep apnea is often thought of as a mild annoyance, uh, but the reality is it's a significant health condition that can lead um, to a range of issues from hypertension to stroke and heart disease, uh, as well as things like depression, anxiety, and headaches. So, um, while you may not consider it uh, something serious, it is definitely something that you should pay attention to. And if you think you are dealing with it, um, you're definitely going to want to consult your doctor on that. So how do you know if you have sleep apnea or not? Symptoms of sleep apnea include loud snoring. So if you don't know you snore, ask your significant other. Uh, if you don't have a significant other, maybe find a way to record yourself sleeping at night. Um, and that is if you don't snore. I, I know I snore really bad because my wife will kick me out of the bedroom sometimes and make me go sleep on the couch or in the guest room. She says I sound like a chainsaw at nights. Um, episodes where you stop breathing during sleep. Gasping for air during sleep. Awakening with a dry mouth. Morning headaches daytime sleep sleepiness or insomnia or difficulty concentrating irritability or anger if you experience many of these symptoms we recommend seeing a doctor as soon as possible and seek a diagnosis if you meet the requirements of having a current diagnosis you can obtain a service connection and va rating for sleep apnea and receive disability benefits. It's likely your doctor will need to order a sleep study to determine if you have sleep apnea or not. A doctor's diagnosis will be the one of the keys to getting a sleep apnea VA rating. So the very first thing you need for a disability claim 
is a current diagnosis. Uh, that is why we recommend getting in there, getting that sleep study done and find out if you do have sleep apnea or not. In my experience, typically sleep studies can happen one or two ways. They can send you an, an at home kit to perform a sleep study while you're at home, or you go to a sleep study center. I went to a sleep study center. It wasn't too difficult to fall asleep there. However, having all these little sticky um, prods connected to, to your head, to your upper torso, to your lower torso, I uh, kind of felt a little weird, but after about an hour of laying there, I was able to fall asleep. Uh, so get into your doctor, get that referral for sleep study if for a sleep study if you feel that you do have these symptoms of sleep apnea. Yeah, to add a little bit onto that, Jesse, it, it's important to also note that, you know, you can get a disability rating with that diagnosis and you get a diagnosis from either of those methods. So so that's going to depend on your doctor insurance. But, you know, if all you can get is that home sleep study, that's still OK for uh, diagnostic purposes. And then why do so many veterans have sleep apnea? It is a, an extremely common um, condition amongst veterans. Uh, research actually shows a strong correlation between deployments and sleep disorders. Sleep apnea is extremely common among veterans. Uh, the Office of the Inspector General actually found that 1.3 million veterans enrolled in VA healthcare have a sleep apnea diagnosis. That's a big number. Um, as a veteran, uh, you're four times more likely than other Americans to develop sleep apnea. So four times more likely than other Americans to develop sleep apnea. And one in five veterans has obstructive sleep apnea. Now to take that number a little further, uh, since 2009, the number of veteran claims for sleep apnea has increased by over 150% according to USA Today. So we have seen a sharp rise in the number of claims. And um, as you can see, it is one of the most common disabilities or a very common disability amongst veterans. So what is the VA rating for sleep apnea with a CPAP? Currently, the VA rating for sleep apnea with a CPAP is 50%. However, under the new rating criteria, sleep apnea with a CPAP is only rated at 10%. We estimate these changes are coming summer of 2024. If you already have sleep apnea VA rating, you are grandfathered in at the current VA rating regardless of the changes. So if you have sleep apnea and your service connected at 50% because you have a CPAP, you don't have to worry about that changing because you will follow the current rating criteria. So what is the changes going to be for the VA ratings for sleep apnea? Um, as Jesse just mentioned, the most common one, if you have a CPAP machine, is 50%. Um, the new rating guidelines are going to range from 0 to 100%, and there's going to be breaks at 10 and 50. So there used to be a 30% rating for sleep apnea. That's going away completely. Um, and the biggest change overall is going to be the end to the automatic 50% if you have a CPAP machine um, or any breathing assisted device, really. Um, and then overall, it does seem like the proposed changes, the proposed VA changes are going to be bad news for veterans because of that 50% VA uh, sleep apnea rating which is the most common rating that we see right now with the CPAP machine, that's going away completely. And it's going to be essentially just a 10% rating with that uh, same set of conditions. Um, having a sleep apnea diagnosis with the CPAP machine will only get you a 10% VA rating under the new guidelines. So new CPAP rating, like, like Michael was saying, if you have a CPAP under the new rating rules, it's going to be 10%. Under the new VA rating criteria for sleep apnea, a veteran who requires the use of a breathing device such as a CPAP will get only 10%. The new rating criteria uh, for sleep apnea are as follows. For a 100% rating, it says sleep apnea 
with ineffective treatment as determined by sleep study or unable to use treatment due to comorbid conditions and with end organ damage. That is the rating criteria for 100%. For 50%, sleep apnea with ineffective treatment as determined by sleep study or unable to use due to comorbid conditions and without end organ damage. So the biggest difference there is without end organ, uh, organ damage. And now we're going to go all the way down to the 10% rating. Sleep apnea with incomplete relief as determined by sleep study with treatment. This includes sleep apnea with a breathing device such as a CPAP machine. And then the 0%, sleep apnea, asymptomatic with or without treatment. So qualifying comorbidity, comorbidities are conditions that, in the opinion of a medical qualified medical provider, directly impede or prevent the habitual use of a recognized form of treatment shown by sleep study to be effective in the affected veterans case. Examples are contact dermatitis where the mask or interface touches the face, Parkinson's disease, missing limbs, facial disfigurement, or skull fractures. Uh, so that went pretty quick, uh, just covering the, the changes. Not a lot of information to provide there other than what the new rating criteria look like. Um, we're going to open it up to Q&A at this time. And I see that we have already have some questions in the chat. And uh, I'd like to start with Felicia uh, Marilyn. Um, she asked, my, my husband said he would love if one of y'all would reach out to him in regards to his sleep apnea. So Felicia, I would recommend getting your husband signed up for that free discovery call, talking with one of our veteran ambassadors about our program and how we can help. Um, if he chooses and he's a good fit for our program, from there he will be assigned to one of the veteran coaches. And from there they could discuss game plan and strategy. Um, can you drop that free discovery link in the chat in the uh, chat right now, please? Right. So Dwight Hunt, um, he's asking what the ratings on sleep apnea. I think we already covered that, but just to highlight again that uh, fifty percent uh, rating with the CPAP machine, which is the most common that we see right now, that is going to be going away completely, and that new rating for just the CPAP machine. Uh, is going to be a 10%. So again, that just highlights the importance of getting those changes, uh, getting the claim in before those changes happen, because if you can get it rated beforehand, uh, they are gonna grandfather you in under the old guidelines. So you'll be safe uh, with that 50% rating there. Ed Gutierrez, what if you were not diagnosed until 30 years after service, how do you tie, tie it to service? Uh, so that is a great question. Uh, it is very difficult to answer without knowing all of your specific ratings. Uh, you can tie sleep apnea as secondary conditions to primary service connected conditions. In your case, I would recommend doing that discovery call so you can discuss, you know, what your primary conditions are. Is there a link for sleep apnea to be uh, service connected as a secondary condition. So those discovery calls, they're very important. You get to learn more about our program and the processes we take, a little more about the SIM method, the strategy, strategy the education, the medical evidence. So I encourage you all, if you're not signed up with us already, to d do that discovery call. It doesn't hurt to take a few minutes out of your day and learn more about what we do. Well, most importantly, it's free. So you guys really have nothing to lose by doing that. There's a lot of upside. You know, you'll know at the end of that call pretty clearly if it's going to be a good fit or not for you. So um, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, Christian Carranza. So this um, question, uh, if the changes happen, um, would those 
submitted before the change, would they be granted us before changing of the rating? So what the VA typically will do is they're going to take the most favorable of the two guidelines for claims that are have been submitted prior to the change. Um, they haven't clarified with 100% certainty that that's what's going to happen, but that's generally the way it works. So if you are in the process of it, you should be rated under the more favorable of the two guidelines. If it's approved for service connection, which in this case would be the old guidelines, uh, but anything submitted after the fact um, is going to be guaranteed to be rated under that new 10% um, rating criteria. So I would not recommend risking that. You know, if you'd have those claims, get them in now, try to get them adjudicated and decided before that change even hits. Um, that way you're, you could grandfather it and you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it comes back to getting it in a, as soon as possible. If you have a current diagnosis for sleep apnea, reach out, do that discovery call. Um, you'll want to get it in sooner than later so you don't have to worry about your rating being affected by these changes. Um, our discovery calls are free. Um, if you do sign up and for the elite program, the fees associated with that are zero unless you win your claim. Um, everything we do is based off of veterans winning their claims. So even up to the point of getting a decision, there are no fees and once again, there are no fees associated with our program unless you win your claim. Mr. Bojoker, I, I apologize if I butchered your name. What changes are coming? I'm, all, I'm late. So the biggest change right now is the current rating for 50% for sleep apnea is when you have to use a CPAP. That's going to be changed to a 10% rating um, if you currently use a CPAP. There is a 50% rating and a 100% rating, and that's both of those are based off the treatments that you may be able to do or you may not be able to do and how they affect you. But the primary change is that 50%, current 50% with CPAP is going to change to 10%. All right. Uh, also, I, I see your next question, sir. How do we find out more? Do that discovery call and um, link up with one of our veteran ambassadors to get educated on the potential changes coming up in our program. Yeah, the veteran ambassador that you'll be talking to, they're all great. They're very, very knowledgeable in the program and they'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, and then if it's a good fit for you, they can get you signed up right there on the spot um, and get you assigned to a coach. And that will actually get the process of, you know, getting your strategy built out, getting that, ed starting that educational process, building your medical evidence. That's all going to happen with your coach. So the sooner you get that strategy uh, going, you know, the better chance you have of getting that claim in and submitted. So definitely take advantage of those uh, discovery calls because that's going to be a huge first step in that direction for you. Um, David White, uh, how do you get it service connected? Um, there's a couple different ways you can get it service connected. You know, just generally speaking with any claim, it's going to be kind of the same process. Um, you can have a direct service connection um, for that. In the case of sleep apnea, you're um, in most cases going to need to be able to show that you were diagnosed on um, active duty diagnosed for sleep apnea while you were in the service to be able to do that direct connection. Um, it is a common condition that can develop after you've been out of the service and there's several um, kind of primary conditions that that can be connected to. Uh, if that's the case, it would be a secondary condition. Um, a common one that we see is PTSD or mental health. Um, so that'd be a great thing to have a discovery call on and uh, those are great questions for your coaches because they can take a look at your individual situation, uh, take a look at your records, your evidence, see where you're at with everything, and they'll be able to tell you pretty clearly, hey, uh, this is the best path for you in your particular situation because no two veterans are the same. Um, so that's a very general answer, but um, you know, get with a coach, sign up for a discovery call, and you'll be able to get a lot more specific on details like that. And when it comes to primary and secondary conditions, um, 
it's like playing connect the dots. You know, our primary conditions can cause additional secondary conditions that can be service connected. Um, some of the most common issues associated with sleep apnea is mental health, um, is other respiratory issues you may have. Uh, I know the PACT Act, the burn pit, all those presumptive conditions, a lot of them are respiratory conditions that may potentially lead into your sleep apnea. So explore those options and see if there's a possibility for you to get it service connected as a secondary condition. Uh, Michael also mentioned that it potentially could be a primary condition, but for primary conditions, they're looking for in-service aggravation events. So if it wasn't caused or aggravated while in service, it will be very difficult to service connect. And that's when you'll want to look at those secondary conditions. Uh, Travis Nes Nesbeth, if I sur submit my claim on 7 March 2024 and they are still processing, is that enough time to fall under the old schedule rating system? So right now, you would be grandfathered in under the current rating schedule system. Um, claims can take a little while to get through the process, as we all know. And uh, you would be good to go under the current rated system. You would be grandfathered in, sir. Uh, all right, Stacy. I'm not, I'm not even trying to say the last name, so I'm going to mess it up. Um, how do I connect or how can I connect uh, my use of a CPAP to PTSD? So you're not exactly connecting the use of a CPAP. You're connecting the underlying diagnosis of sleep apnea. Just a, an important clarification there. So the CPAP machine would be a method of treatment for sleep apnea. Um, so you really wouldn't connect that. You want to have make sure you have a diagnosis of sleep apnea. And that would be referred to, that would be an example of one of the secondary conditions uh, that we're talking about. Um, and we do have a preferred provider network that we can refer you to um, to help with that connection. You would need essentially a nexus letter. So that medical opinion stating that, you know, these two things are connected. That's going to be your best method. Um, the CPAP itself is going to go into the rating under the current guidelines. You know, that would qualify you in most cases for that 50% rating. Um, so that is an important variable. But again, you're going to want to make sure that you have that underlying diagnosis of sleep apnea uh, before you can really even consider filing a claim for sleep apnea. And, you know, one of the biggest things that you need when you're doing a secondary condition, like Michael mentioned, is that nexus letter. That nexus letter is the cause and effect um, of a primary condition to a secondary condition. There's a lot of great information that goes into building and establishing a link between those primary conditions and those secondary conditions. And more often than not, if you don't have that nexus letter, that supporting evidence, it's not going to be a very successful claim. Yeah, and that goes straight back to the basics. You know, you want those components of every claim. You want that diagnosis. Uh, you need an in-service event or aggravation, and then you need that nexus letter. And that nexus letter is, again, that's a connection between that in-service event and that diagnosis that you have. So those three components um, need to be present for almost all claims. And that's going to be kind of the first step of that's getting that diagnosis. So I know we harp on that a lot, but if you have a diagnosis, uh, you know, make sure it's current, make sure you have updated records showing that. If you don't, then that's something, you know, get your butt into the doctor, as we say, you know, you want to get seen for that and get that test started as soon as you can, because the quicker uh, you can get that diagnosis, the quicker you can look at getting that claim submitted. So Gia Matos, when will the sleep apnea change be effective? So while we don't have an exact date of when the change is going to happen, we anticipate that it will happen the late summer, early fall of this year. There will be a 60 day grace period after the change goes into effect. And, you know, it comes back to what Michael and I have been saying the entire time. If you have sleep apnea, get that claim submitted ASAP so you're not sweating about 
those changes. Um, the sooner the better when it comes to getting claims submitted when there's potential approved changes coming up. Absolutely. Time is of the essence in this. And, you know, if you have the evidence ready to go, that's where your coach is going to come in as well. You know, they'll be able to double check everything, make sure you have all your documents, you have all the pieces to that puzzle uh, before you submit it. Because uh, speaking of Anthony, uh, he has a question. What if you have an appeal for sleep apnea? Um, now, an appeal is going to be handled the same way. You know, if you have it filed and you have it ready to go and it's already in the system, um, you should be grandfathered in based off it being, you know, in the system before those changes hit. Um, it's if it goes after the changes hit. And again, as Jesse said, we don't know exactly. We're thinking late summer, early spring. Um, then that's going to be under the old, the new guidelines as opposed to the old guidelines. So sleep apnea is um, one that can be appealed. So just because you've been denied for it in the past doesn't mean that you can't gather new and relevant evidence and resubmit that claim for a second um, time. So very important to note that, you know, just because you've been denied in the past, whether it's a recent denial or it's been long ago, you know, you can always get with the coach. Uh, rebuild that strategy, gather that missing evidence, and then they'll be able to help you resubmit that claim as an appeal. Dan Chapman, what ties or connects my sleep ap apnea to my servers? Uh, like I said earlier, sir, uh, without knowing what conditions you're currently service connected for, or if the sleep apnea manifested while you were in service, it would be hard to determine which path would be best for you. Um, comes back to doing that discovery call, getting with one of our veteran ambassadors and discussing your situation even further. There are several primary conditions that you can service connect sleep apnea to, uh, whether it's mental health, uh, weight gain because of the inability to do physical activities because of other service connected um, physical disabilities, other respiratory issues you may have, uh, certain heart conditions that can be linked and tied to. So there's a lot of possibilities to tie sleep apnea as a secondary condition. Um, would really just need to know what your primary conditions are first before you can move forward with that specific um, secondary claim. Absolutely. And again, I know you've said it probably 20 times already, but <laughs> schedule, schedule that discovery call because that's going to give you um, a lot more information about the program and if it's right that you know the coach that you're assigned to is going to be the best one to be able to tell you hey you have the evidence here you know here's how we can connect it or you know i'm not seeing it here there's not enough evidence but here's what we need to go out and get and then we can go ahead and get that claim process now i know michael mentioned our preferred provider network earlier they are amazing at helping veterans attain the medical evidence they need to have to support claims and to win claims. Um, I can't speak enough about the quality um, evidence that they assist veterans in getting. Um, one of the things they do is a comprehensive chart review. They look at all your conditions and they determine which ones can potentially be service connected, what conditions that they can help with nexus letters and disability benefits questionnaires. And at the end of the day, it's that medical evidence that wins the claim. Absolutely. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I did not um, start with the ACI, but I got myself to about 70%. And there was multiple claims that had been denied that I wasn't able to get across the finish line on my own. And I went to the preferred provider network that we recommend here. Uh, use that for myself personally, paid out of pocket for it. And I was successful with a lot of those claims the second time around because of that medical evidence. So um, can't say enough good things about them. Um, that is, as Jesse said, the, the key component, you know, medical evidence wins claims. So um, let's see, Carl uh, Ellison, do you, you know when the changes are, um, what the changes are rather? So the changes, um, again, are going to be that the most common rating uh, for a CPAP machine right now is 50%. So if you have a sleep apnea claim that's approved for service connection uh, and you do have a CPAP machine or a breathing assisted device, 
um, the most common rating that we see is 50 percent. Um, as of uh, date to be determined, probably later this summer sometime, um, that is going away. That 50% uh, rating is going away. And the new rating for a sleep apnea diagnosis with a CPAP machine is going to be that 10%. Um, so it is a drastic um, difference. And that's why we're emphasizing so much to get those claims in now uh, before those changes hit. So you give yourself the best chance of getting rated under the current guidelines as opposed to the new guidelines that will be coming into effect. So Remy 86, if I already have a claim in, will I be attached to the original rating criteria? Uh, yes, sir. As long as you have a claim in now, you will be grandfathered in under the current criteria. Um, so no, no worries there. You will be grandfathered in and uh, hopefully your claim goes smoothly through the process. Absolutely. Uh, Patrick, we've already touched on this, but just to kind of highlight that again, what date does a change happen? Um, as of right now, the VA hasn't released an official date that they're going to change. Um, the projections that we have are probably late summer. Um, and then as Jesse mentioned, also, there's going to be that 60 day grace period. But, you know, again, you don't want to wait and push those claims out. Uh, you want to get on those now and make sure that you can get that claim submitted as far ahead of those changes as you can to give yourself the best chance of getting rated again under those much more favorable guidelines that they have right now. Bob Dragwick, um, I have sleep, a slip out and a claim in now. What happens if they deny and keep dragging it out? Does my chance at the current rating system ever run out? Um, Bob, I'll be honest with you. I do not know the answer to that question. I know for current claims, um, if approved, you'll be grandfathered in uh, based off of the submission date of the claim. So even if your orig original claim runs out past the change date, you would still be grandfathered in under the current rules. Um, you, when a claim is denied, you have several other several options. You can always do a higher level review or a supplemental claim with new evidence. Um, but I do not know the complete answer to your question. We will get back to you on that. We have uh, other coaches and veteran coach managers in the rooms that are taking notes on some of the questions, if not all of them. And we will get that answer for you, sir. It's a great question, though, Bob. Um, Robert, can you get 100% for sleep apnea? So as it currently stands, under the current guidelines, 50% um, is the current maximum rating that you can receive just for sleep apnea. Um, that doesn't mean that it can't put you over the top in combination with other ratings that you may already have. Um, under the new guidelines, um, there is a 100% uh, rating, but that's going to be very, very difficult for uh, the vast majority of people to reach uh, because it does involve things like, um, what did it say, end, um, end, end organ damage. Um, so if you're unable to use the treatment due to comorbidities and you have end organ damage, um, under the new guidelines, that would <clears throat> potentially qualify you for that 100%. Um, again, under the current guidelines, um, there is only a 50%. That's the maximum you can reach. Um, and again, that those 100% guidelines under the new rating are going to be pretty um, difficult for most people to reach. So it's not something I would really count on or expect. So Bonnie... If I am rated at 50% now for sleep apnea, but I was planning on putting another claim for my knee, could they lower my rating if my knee is changed? So typically during the claims process, the only thing that is going to be evaluated is the claim condition. So doing an increase or adding a new condition is not going to affect your current rating for sleep apnea. Great question, though. All right, good question. Al Altonia uh, Salam, uh, when is the discovery call and how do I sign up? 
Um, so when it is, you can actually schedule that. Um, it's not going to be necessarily at a specific uh, rolling time. Um, that's something that you can go ahead and schedule, uh, you know, yourself, schedule for yourself, and you can schedule at a time that works uh, for you. Um, and how do you sign up? We can drop that link um, on how you can go ahead and sign up for that discovery call in the chat there. Uh, just click that link and that'll take you to the sign up page and then you can go and get that process started. So if you would like to do the discovery call, it's vaclaims.help. Uh, so go to the web page, get signed up for that discovery call and start exploring your options and learn more about our program. Chris, I just got a sleep at, sleep study done. I was diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. I now have a CPAP machine. Is it okay to file an intent to file even though I have increases and in appeals claims going? Yes, sir. It absolutely is okay to have that intent to file open. Um, depending on where your increases are at in the stage, uh, if you move forward with that sleep apnea claim, um, depending on what stage that increase is in, they potentially could combine it into one claim or keep them as separate claims. Really just depends on what stage your current claims are in. Right. Catherine kind of ties into that same intent to file question. Uh, if you have an intent or if you do an intent to file, will you get rated under the current system? Um, so to clarify that question a little more, the intent to file um, is a very general placeholder of sorts. So it doesn't actually get tied to any specific condition um, until you actually file the claim. Um, so having an intent to file in and of itself isn't going to really do anything um, in terms of the rating. It would actually have to be attached to a specific claim. Um, so when you went to file the sleep apnea claim, it would get attached to an intent to file if you had one pre-existing. Um, but just having the intent to file itself um, does not uh, is not going to do anything in terms of whether it's rated under the new or the old system. Samuel Santiago, can sleep apnea be affected by hi hiatal hernia or GERD? Um, Samuel, Michael and I are not medical experts. Um, we're not medical providers. Uh, I would recommend signing up for our program, reaching out to our preferred provider network, have them do that comprehensive chart review and let the medical professionals uh, determine if hiatal hernia or GERD or acid reflux can contribute to your sleep apnea. Absolutely. Yeah, they are the medical experts. I'll tell you very clearly if that connection is there and can be made. If not, then that's what your coach is there for as well. They're going to help you uh, evaluate that decision and you know find the best path forward, whatever that may be for you. Um, Jason Orlano, I filed sleep apnea secondary to PTSD, but was denied. Uh, I was diagnosed through the VA and they issued me a CPAP machine as well. What did I do wrong? Um, so Jason, it's a, it's a good question. Um, the fact that you were diagnosed through the VA and the fact that the VA issued you a CPAP machine um, in and of itself doesn't mean that it's going to be service connected. So um, it can be a little confusing because the VA healthcare system is actually a separate entity from the VA benefits and the disability side of the house. Um, so you're still going to have to prove you have the first step, you have that diagnosis, but you're still going to have to prove that in service event or aggravation for the claim to be valid for service connection. Um, so I don't know your whole situation. This would be a really good question to get on a discovery call with because a coach would be able to dig into your uh, particular situation more. Um, if you got a decision letter, that's a great resource as well because your coach can go through that with you and that will give them a lot more details on why exactly it was denied. Um, but that may be one of the reasons that it was denied is you were missing that nexus because um, again, just having it through the VA, the VA will diagnose and will treat you for it, uh, but that doesn't automatically obligate or guarantee that you're going to get service connected for it. Carl Ellison, how can I get a sleep at your rating when I was not diagnosed in the military? 
so comes back to what are your current disability ratings? Can it be done as a secondary condition? Um, just because you weren't diagnosed in service with it doesn't mean that you can't get it service connected. It will be could be based off of your current service connected disabilities. So your primary conditions and potentially do sleep apnea as a secondary condition. Uh, comes back to that medical evidence, comes back to that nexus letter that we've mentioned a few times now. Is there a link between the sleep apnea and your uh, already service-connected disabilities? All right. Uh, Joseph Beach here. Um, I have 50% for sleep apnea and 10% for tinnitus. How will that affect me? Um, not sure 100% what you're asking there, Joseph, but if you're referring to um, the rating changes, um, if you have 50% and you're already rated for sleep apnea, um, you're going to get grandfathered in and if, essentially those changes won't affect you. Um, tinnitus is a completely separate condition, um, but as far as the sleep apnea condition itself goes, uh, if you're already service connected for that, there shouldn't be any real impact to that because you're going to get grandfathered in. Um, if that doesn't clarify it or doesn't answer it, um, I would recommend, again, that discovery call because uh, they'll be able to get a lot more specific with your individual situation. Um, so hopefully that clarifies a little bit. But again, lean on those discovery calls. They're free and um, they're going to be a good resource or a great resource for you uh, to get more personal with your particular situation. James Lucas, should I submit mental health and sleep apnea at the same time just to get something documented or keep them separate? Uh, so it really depends on if you're submitting both of those as primary conditions or as secondary conditions. If you're trying to do sleep apnea secondary to mental health, that mental health would have to be service connected first before you could do that secondary condition. So it really just depends on how you're going about doing the claim, whether you're doing both one as a primary and the other one as a secondary or vice versa. Um, so you'll want to keep them separate if you're trying to link one caused by the other. Um, so just depends on how and what type you're trying to type of submission you're trying to do. All right, James uh, Crawford. When did the changes take place? Sorry, I missed it. No problem, James. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have a specific date for the changes. Um, basically, the VA has said that the changes are coming. Um, and the best kind of information that we have right now is uh, probably late summer um, is kind of the, the timeline that we're thinking. Um, we don't have specific dates. Obviously, when we do, we will um, keep you guys updated on that. Uh, but at the moment, we don't have specific dates, so that's why we're just emphasizing get them in as soon as you can, uh, get those discovery calls done, get those strategy sessions done, and um, get those fully developed claims submitted so that you have the best chance of getting rated under the current guidelines. And again, those current guidelines are going to be much more favorable than the guidelines um, that are coming to be in effect. Brandy ba Bauman, I want to ensure I understand correctly. I'm currently rated at 50% and have been for a number of years. Should I be grandfathered in? Yes, sir, you'll be grandfathered in with these approved changes. You do not have to worry about your 50% rating changing. Uh, so you will be grandfathered in and you do not have to worry about anything, sir. All right, a lot of great questions in here. We're um, running out of time, so if we don't get to your question, uh, we will get you an answer. Uh, we're going to go through after this ends and go ahead and answer all the questions that were put in chat. Um, so if you don't get an answer, don't worry. We will get to you uh, before or after this uh, session ends. Um, Anthony Blackman, um, is it too late to apply for sleep apnea secondary to PTSD or sinusitis? Uh, the VA diagnosed me about two years ago. I have been using a CPAP since August, issued by the VA with obstructive sleep apnea. Um, so there is no, there's no timeline in terms of when you have to file that claim. Um, really, the thing we're emphasizing today is that those changes are coming. Um, so the sooner you can get it in, 
uh, the better chance you have of getting rated under those current guidelines, which are the favorable rating of 50% uh, with the sleep apnea. Um, so you do want to make sure that you have that nexus and you have all the medical evidence to support it. Um, so that would be a great thing to have a strategy call and get with a coach about because they'll be able to take a look at your overall medical evidence and see um, if you have enough evidence there or if maybe you need to go to our preferred provider to get a nexus letter. Um, so a little bit of a vague answer there, but um, basically there is no timeline, so you still can file for that. Again, the recommendation is just do it sooner over later because we don't want you to miss the current guidelines as they stand. Michael, we're getting close to the top of the hour. You want to give some closing thoughts, sir? Yeah. So, um, you know, if you guys uh, aren't familiar with VNCI, we operate off kind of three pillars. Um, you know, we operate off of uh, the strategy, call it the SEM method for short, strategy, education, and then medical evidence. Um, and again, medical evidence, as we've highlighted several times throughout this, you know, that's what wins claims. Um, so we are a coaching and consulting company. Um, you're going to be assigned, if you sign up for our elite program, you will be assigned a coach. Uh, that's going to be a one-on-one -on -one relationship that you have with them. Um, the initial thing you're going to do is a strategy session. They just want to get a baseline and see where you're at with everything, what claims you have uh, already won, what claims you've been denied, um, what you're currently rated for, all those types of things so they can get a real clear picture. Um, once you have that, they're going to help you submit claims. We're going to be involved in the claim submission process as well. So you're never going to be alone in that part of it. We can't do it for you, uh, but we can walk alongside and teach you as we go. And then CMP prep. Um, the CMP, it's short for compensation and pension. Um, and that is an administrative exam ordered by the VA. Um, and that is typically kind of the culmination of one of the most important days of um, your entire claim process. So we'll be there to help prepare you for that. Um, and then we have a ton of great educational resources. So we have live classes via Zoom. Um, that happens, you know, two or three times pretty much every day. Uh, we have coffee with the coaches. Uh, it's a very um, informal kind of open format um, that happens every morning. Uh, it's really great community. Um, if you're kind of missing that sense of community that you had in the military, um, there's a lot of really cool guys and gals that are in this one. Um, and like I said, it's an open format, so it's a little less formal and a little more uh, free flowing. Um, and then we have uh, mental health Mondays. So if you have a mental health exam, uh, whether that's through our preferred provider or a CMP exam, we have those on Mondays. Uh, we have the CMP prep. And then we also have elite member Q and A uh, options as well. So, I want to highlight one really great resource. Uh, it's Brian's book. You deserve it, and it's actually the second edition is now available. So you have a couple different options. We're actually going to give you a free copy of that. You can actually download a free copy of that book by going to youdeserveitfree.com. That's youdeserveitfree.com. Uh, if you want a hard copy of that, you can go and order it on Amazon. Uh, get yours today. That is a wealth of information, and it's something that um, will help you greatly in your claim process along the way. So, you know, as we wrap this up, we've mentioned it numerous times throughout this uh, Facebook Live. Do that free discovery call. It doesn't hurt to explore your options with us. You'll learn more about our program, learn more about the processes, um, they'll be with one of our veteran ambassador, ambassadors, and you can sign up for that free discovery call at vaclaims.help. So if you need help, please, please, please reach out to our organization at vaclaimsinsider.com. We would love to partner with you on your VA claim journey. Uh, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So we are here to assist you in as many ways as possible. Uh, thank you guys for all tuning in today and we hope to see you next time. You guys all have a great day. Thanks everyone.